So we're going to talk about how to help your child make friends, and I'm not a PowerPoint guru, so bear with me if I screw this up at all, but um, a social skill is a skill that allows someone to interact and act appropriately in a social context, and I was just thinking about this today. It's a sophisticated uh, skill as we get older. Um, I find that uh, all the subtle things that I do as I get older, uh, my husband's work has a party every year at the holidays, and I have a bit of stress when I'm about to go. Am I going to remember everybody's names? I've probably met these people uh, many times before, but I really want to remember who is his coworker's name and his wife's name. Uh, I have to think, how old are their kids now? It's hard to believe sometimes their kids are really little when uh, I first met them, and now they're in high school, so lots to talk about as we get older. But um, I find over time it's especially important to know what somebody's name is. Uh, it makes you feel good about yourself that someone that you might not have seen can remember that they met you a year ago and they meet you once a year every year and you know their name. I mean, it's important. Um, I just had a subtle uh, social skills thing happen to me and it wasn't intentional on my part, but I had uh, reintroduced myself to someone in Cub Scouts. Apparently I've met three times and I said, it's nice to meet you. And the person said, oh, I've met you many times before. And I felt like a real, I felt kind of stupid about that. So now I have to use strategies that I teach other kids and adults to know that that's going to be a problem when I meet her again. I better write her name down. So thank God for technology. I've really been using strategies in my own phone. I use notes. Her name's Sally. Cub Scouts, I better know that when I see her again, because I know it's something, I get away a lot with saying, you know, I don't remember names very well, and I really don't, but uh, shame on me if I can't use some of the strategies that I teach a lot of my kids and adults to use. Uh, um, anyway, I'm gonna, I might go off topic too, I'm sorry, I apologize. Anyway, um, and why we care about this so much is we want kids to be able to make a friend because there's, we're going to get to why it's important in a minute, but um, it's part of life, you know. Uh, part of social skills that for some people seem to come very easily would be making eye contact, um, being able to walk in a room and say hello, walk in your classroom and greet the teacher and your friends there, um, your tone of voice. Uh, what I find interesting is um, teens often don't realize that they, some of our kids will come for speech therapy. Let's say it's not for, for, for this issue, but they'll show me that they're totally bored by, by, how, by how they're standing. And it may, I tell them how it makes me feel. I'm like, you look totally bored. What's up with that? And usually it's not, nothing that really is related to um, what we're talking about. but. Um, how you stand, how you make eye contact, it's really important. We want to be able to exchange when we're talking. I want to be able to take my turn, and I want you to say something, and then you might take turn that around and, and, ask, and ask something of me. Um, can I be, can I change the topic on somebody? I find a lot of kids that we see have a really hard time not talking about their interests. So, we have a 14-year-old uh, high school student who his particular and solitary interest is getting old phones, the old dial phones, and getting them to work again. And then sometimes he adds lights to them. He's really good at circuitry and elect electric stuff, which I'm... I mean, I feel like that topic could be one minute and I'm over it. I mean, I, I don't know who he runs into that's interested in what he's interested in, but that's it. That's all he wants to talk about. So be able to say, well, maybe there's something I could ask you and um, uh, find if, we, if there's something that we have that we'd like to talk about, whether it's football as an interest or uh, it might be a certain craft or something that I'm good in at school, but um, so that's important. Um, being able to hear what you're telling me. I have a lot of kids that learn, okay, I said something, now you have to say something. And um, 
when they ask me something though they're not hearing what I'm telling them back and then they go right back to, to what they want to talk about again taking turns is hard for some kids so so all of our interactions they require social skills um, the far-reaching effects of having problems in these areas is like getting a job in the future which is really important um, but can I collaborate and work with my boss, uh, clients that I might have, and a coworker? What about my uh, being able to work alongside teams at school? I have a project uh, that I'm doing as a group. Am I able to do that? And will I have a boyfriend or girlfriend? These are really important things. Um, am I going to get married? Can I have friendships? I mean, we all know how important they are to us. Uh, we need someone to that has our back. I mean, it's really important to have friends. Um, and I'm not sure if it's in the next slide, but I was just reading a really interesting article about um, suicide is something that could happen for some people. They're re really lonely. So um, anyway, uh, Social anxiety is one of the issues that some kids might have. I could speak for, I have a, two children. I have a social skills guru at home. He was born, and you don't, you're not born with skills. You learn skills, but he is the most friendly and gregarious kid that you've ever met. And I have, my daughter is not, I can't say she's the opposite, but she's very anxious about any social interactions that she has. And it's crippling at times. She, um, so what I, I'll get to that in a minute, but I was going to talk about was is we've used a lot of these um, techniques and skills, and it's really helped her um, to, to get through. Uh, so there's people with social anxiety, people who are shy. Um, we have kids that um, have problems with uh, attention. And we all, I don't know if anybody here has kids that have issues with that. Just can I see a show of hands? Anybody? Kids with attention. So sometimes we get attention in a way that we don't want, and they get a lot of reinforcement back that that's not appropriate, stop doing that. And sometimes kids just have a hard time and they stop trying or they don't try a lot to, they, they get a lot of bad reactions to their behavior, um, and they just don't, don't know what to do. Um, they interrupt while they're talking. They have a hard time taking their turn. They intrude on other kids while they're playing. Um, and they have a hard time trying to calm down. We have a couple kids on our street. I have to, in my mind, I always think just because of the groups that I hold and I work with kids that are tiny, if I jack those kids up, I can't give them to parents that way or <laughs> they I get in big trouble. So sometimes what I'll do before it's time to go is I give warnings. We're going to be done in a half hour. Mom and Dad are taking you home. Let's try to calm our bodies down and stop playing these games, stop running around the house because they get very wound up in, um, uh, in any event. So uh, children that are really smart too, high IQs, Sometimes they also have um, a problem. Um, and then um, ki kids on the spectrum. Does anybody here have children on the spectrum, autism spectrum? And we know about that. So um, we're going to get more into this in a second. So, um, so social skills and instruction, it's just like anything else. Uh, people that come to me because they had a stroke and they have aphasia and they have problems trying to get words out. They know what something is called, but they can't get the name of it out. I could teach them a strategy to help them, and it works. You have to use it, though. Uh, we have kids that come to our social skills group, and it's amazing to hear um, what, they're then a what, what, what they're able to do then with things that they've learned in our classes. Um, OK, so one of the best way to do this is by practicing, and we're going to get into more about what that might be. Some of it could be role playing, which um, is a lot of fun for, for, for these kids. The best part, too, is in a social skills group, you're not the only one in that class that's having a problem. So you get to practice with kids that are having the same issues that you are. Um, one of the things that we do, I'm not sure, I might be able to walk around with my iPad at the end if we have time, but I'll be able to show you some of the things that we can watch. Um, on, on YouTube. 
um, a social story is effective too. And just this last week, we have um, three little guys that were going to go. One was going to go for an eye exam, and one was going to go to get a tooth, uh, a drilling. Uh, what am I? What am I thinking of? And freaking out about going. How how am I going to make it through that experience? And mom was also saying this is not going to go well. And so we we just made a book off the internet about what is it like to go at the dentist. They you know they're they're they're, they're certainly certainly not going to let you be in pain while you're at the dentist. So um, they read through a social story before they went, and it ended up working out fantastically. So there's a lot of things that we could do to help. All right. So this is what's amazing to me is there there's unwritten rules to everything that we do but um, all these nuances especially as we get older um, unwritten rules that are out there we don't get a rule book when we're born and being someone tells you don't stare at someone who um, the, this is one of the classic examples and it's not something that happens for most people past the age of three or four is we saw someone at Giant Eagle that was could have been more than 500 pounds. And I had the three-year-old thing in the line where they said, wow, you're really big. And that's okay for a two, three-year-old to do, but as we start hitting um, the time that we're entering school, four or five years old, that's not not expected that that, that, that is something that you would say anymore. Like, um, why does she look like that? Those kind of things. Um, but uh, some kids have a hard, have a very hard time incorporating all these hidden rules into what they're supposed to do. Um, uh, some people have an intuitive understanding and they pick them up really easily, but some some people don't. So some of the examples of an unwritten rule would be you 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 say hello to somebody when you see them. Um, don't stand too close to someone when you're talking. Uh, we all know how that feels. Um, when we ride on an elevator, um, we face the doors. Uh, you don't ask somebody how much they, what, how much they make. And how do I know when it's okay to talk about uh, bathroom humor and things like that? It's why is it okay with my friends, but I can't do it with an adult? Those are all very hard things to learn over time. Uh, trying to look at other people. If someone is looking at their watch or they look bored, should I keep talking? When do I get those cues and I need to stop? Um, <laughs> the holidays are coming up, so if you get a gift that it's something that you already have or that you don't like, you pretty much you shouldn't tell somebody that. Oh, I already have this, or this. I I, I don't like these things, um, and don't um, pick your nose or things that are related to that. It's funny that some kids really just don't know that. All right, so um, one of the things to do first is this is something that I did. This is a tip that I got from the research that we do to hold our social skills classes is I got a lot of feedback from my anxious daughter that no one likes me. Everyone hates me at school. No one plays with me. No one talks to me. No one wants to talk about things I'm interested in. So... I did the first tip would be talk with the teacher and sure enough she said I have no idea what she's talking about she's got three girlfriends that she sits with all the time she has kids to sit with at lunch she seems to do fine on at recess she's not by herself and we have no idea where this is coming from so it's kind of a characteristic of my daughter with her anxiety is she um, will also talk herself out of success when it's time to go do something especially now that she's a tween it's starting to ramp itself up again so we're using all of our strategies again but uh, getting the opinion of the teacher is is really important um, I was really surprised at that I was kind of we with with the drama and her explanation about the problem she was having I thought for sure that I'd get I'd find out what was going on at school. So um, great to talk with them. They see them during the day, five days a week. So um, they'll be able to help you with that. Um, 
so one of the other ideas about uh, social skills not being as easy to learn as in the past is that we really don't well I date myself because back in the day my mom would say bye and kick us out the door and she had no idea where we were we were unsupervised uh, went all over town drove rode my bike down in the metro parks I had no sense of how far things were I'd go to the beach in Bay Village from out in North Olmstead didn't realize it took me an hour and a half to ride my bike home I would be late to eat dinner but I mean we were with kids since we were you know and then we had kid, kids in the neighborhood who were kind of not so nice or a bit jerky and learn how to deal with that on our own but um, just with the current safety these days I mean I don't I never let my preschool kids play in the front yard period I would always have them in the backyard just there's wacky things going on um, so play groups is I don't know about you guys but play groups is what we did a lot of a lot also too when I was working my kids were in daycare so they got a lot of um, experience with, with with kids at the daycare which was great for me but um, we would also set up play dates on the weekend. Um, so play dates are awesome. Uh, we're going to get into this possibly later um, if there's time. But a uh, crucial thing to do is if you have a child that's having some some problems with their skills and 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 trying to interact with kids, don't have a play date with more than one child when you start off. Like, don't invite five other kids over for a play date. If it's something that you're trying to assist with and help them with, it's too much. So um, it's always good, too, to, to um, have things planned in advance. I think one of the times that we did uh, had a little girl over for a play date for my daughter, and I had cupcakes planned, and I had a board game. It might have been a board game or a craft. I'm not sure what it was. And it turned out we did the cupcakes, broke the ice, and then they went off and did their own thing, which was fantastic. I kind of was on the outskirts to make sure all was going well, but um, start off with play dates where there's just one or two kids. One, one is the best to start. Um, okay, another big thing is how we react to their complaints. I had to be very careful that I didn't tell my daughter that um, uh, I didn't blow her off when she told me she had certain feelings about being anxious at school. I had to empathize with her and tell her that I understood give examples of something that happened to me. Uh, I just had a friend tell me her son who is seven years old um, he is in second grade he lives in Medina uh, all the kids in the neighborhood take his bus it's packed with all kids around his grade they're all talking about the, the party at the sky zone Saturday that they were all going to and he did not get an invite to the party which turned out to be um, the invitation was in the outer part of his bag and they they didn't know that he that 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 he was not invited and his he was crushed and as she's telling me the story it made me cry I mean it it's terrible do you know what I mean he thought he was the only kid on that whole school bus that that did not get an invite to the party so we've all had an experience like that so um, especially now that my daughter is in that tween age, that sixth grade, there's a lot of little things that start happening. And I could recite a hundred things from back in my day where girls were not so nice to me and so on and so forth. But um, it's always good to try to share a story about uh, a thing that, that might have happened to you in the past. Um, empathizing is hard to do, but it really helps. That's the way to go. So, um, so one of the ways to well we're going to get into this too in a little bit more is is just about kindness um a lot of what these what our kids can learn about skills are they're going to come from us um but it's about respect caring um and so on and so forth we're going to get into that more but being an emotion coach is something that parents can do um 
I'm reading what this says. Children develop better self-control when their parents talk to them about their feelings in a problem-solving way instead of telling them, oh, just go to your room and cool off. It doesn't help anybody. Um, we want to help them sort through. Uh, okay, so you wanted to talk with uh, your friend Janie, and uh, she said that um, she didn't want to sit by you at lunch today. She wanted to sit with her other group of friends. What can we do about that? Can we have a backup plan then when you go to school tomorrow? Is there some? Is there someone else that that you can ask to to sit with you at your table? And there's an awesome article I just read, and I've got all the resources. I was going to say I could email um, the PowerPoint to you, and I can also email my um, all the references I used if you would like them. Um, but authoritative parenting, not authoritarian parenting, is what we want to strive for. So authoritative parenting is when we set a li limit, but we also relate to their, their problems, things that they're saying that are going wrong with warmth, and we attempt to help them shape their behavior through discussion and an explanation of the reason for the rules that we have. Authoritarian parents are just controlling them through, you know, why, why don't you go to your room and cool off, or we um, um, tend not, not to hear what they're saying. Sometimes that's all I need to do is hear my daughter just relate how her day went. And then sometimes after she has a minute to look back on it, she'll say, well, I guess um, what I was telling you isn't as dramatic as what it really was. And now I know what to do about it because we're using these strategies that we've been talking about. So uh, teaching kids, kids how to converse in a polite way um, is very important and something that we can start doing when they're very young. Talk about trading information. Um, talk about ways that we could do that. Talk about not how we're going to talk about our interests all the time, but we want to ask someone else things that, that they're interested in. Um, and I can I could get into that more. I brought some of the materials that we actually use um, at our um, practice for our social skills groups. And um, one of the things that we talk about is a friend file. And I could kick myself; I forgot it. But it's a really we have a lot of ways of doing a friend file. But we we literally have a picture of a file folder, and it's in our brain. So when I meet Sarah, um, I'm trying to think about things about Sarah that I know. I know both of her kids go to school here with my kids. Her son just went on a, on a Mohican trip with my daughter. They happen to go the same week. Um, they're involved in scouts. My son is involved in scouts. So as I get older, my brain can't handle that much more information. I'm not remembering things as much. But there's always something that I could talk with about Sarah. I could ask her about how is your son doing in sixth grade? Here's how Julia's doing in sixth grade. We could compare and contrast stories. Um, but I always want to learn a little about you. And I, wanna, I can't remember everything about you, but I'm going to try to remember one of those things about you so I could perhaps ask you about that when I see you the next time. But making friend files is something that we do a lot um, at our practice. When we have a group of eight kids sitting around a table, some of the stuff is as basic as if they're younger. Um, what food do you like the best? What color do you like? Do you like sports? If you don't like sports, what do you like? What kind of books do you like to read? And almost always, there's a, there's a common um, point among someone in that group that, that, that likes some, some, something that you like. So um, you just have to find out what that is. Um, so here's something about our modern day, which is not something that we had when I was a kid, but uh, uh, games where um, they have to compete against each other, usually for kids that can't handle this kind of thing. It's, it's, a, it's a recipe for disaster. Um, so, so competitive games usually is not a good way to go, especially if you're arranging a play date. Um, so 
it, it would only make sense that we would put away toys for a play date that encourage fighting, like toy swords, weapons, things like that. Uh, a lightsaber accident occurred at my house the other night. My husband was a big Star Wars fan when he was younger. He has his own lightsaber. <laughs> We're not allowed to touch it. And uh, my son had gotten one from his aunt and any of that stuff. I mean, it, especially for kids that don't get, if they get really excited about those kind of things and they really start swinging and whacking away, uh, it's not a good thing to have for um, a play group, a play date. Uh, and these... <laughs> Everybody's got a Wii these days or an Xbox. I don't get any of that stuff. I was never good at that when I was younger. Um, but that's what my son's playdates seem to be. I'm going over to Nick's house and I'm gonna we're gonna play Mario, but we don't talk to each other at all for two hours. It's really weird. It's really bizarre. Uh, and I could go on and on. I'm sure you guys all know how technology these days have changed our lives. But do you ever walk in? I just walked into a doctor's office. It was probably 20 people in the waiting room. And not a single person looked at anyone because everybody was looking at their phone. And I was too. I always have an excuse why I needed to because I needed to look at my schedule for the day. But no one really greeted anyone. I just find it very weird. And then I also find it strange that my friends... Um, daughter got invited to homecoming via text that is so crazy i mean and I, I always sound like a dinosaur like back in back when i was a, in that grade my daughter's grade wasn't allowed to call boys i wasn't allowed to call people after eight if anybody called my house after eight they must be a serial killer their parents haven't taught them a thing about manners um if someone picked you up to take you somewhere, they came to the door, they had to shake my dad's hand. It's just weird. Like, people don't talk anymore. So I'm just wondering why this social skills thing is going to go in the future as I get older. It's, things are stranger and stranger. Maybe not for them as much as for me because I just don't get it. But um, that's um, these types of games and stuff. I mean, it might be a con That's That's the dilemma is do I have a play date and allow them to do that? There's not a whole lot of talking going on when there's games like that, but then I see we have a little guy we know, and if they're playing uh, anything violent, he gets, he just goes off the charts. It really affects people, you know, he just gets really ramped up and it's scary to me, so. Okay, so um, s teaching someone to... Um, this is something we're going to talk about is called theory of mind which I find very fascinating and I've done a lot of reading on is that um, if my social skills are impaired a lot of times I don't get that you have thoughts and feelings like I do it's really it's it's fascinating to me um, I need to be able to have the ability to get in somebody else's head and understand how they feel about something it may not be how I feel but you have thoughts and feelings that are altogether not the same as mine. I have a um, high school student that has a really hard time with his skills, and he uh, has very uh, peculiar, well, I shouldn't say peculiar interests, but um, he dresses up in full night costume and goes to reenactments, and his family goes all over, um, this area of Pennsylvania and there's a rock band that plays there and they play old bagpipe instruments and he thinks this is the best rock band in the world and he can't understand why when he told me about it last session why didn't I not hop on YouTube and get into it because it's the most awesome thing and it's so odd and weird to think that he has a very hard time getting that not everybody's interested in things that he's interested in He's, he's mystified by it and angry with me a lot that I don't get that um, I should be buying all their albums. So, in any event, um, being able to uh, realize that you have your own thoughts and feelings outside of what's in my brain um, is important. So, um, 
So it says kids are more likely to develop a strong sense of, of, of empathy when their own emotional needs are being met at home. Um, I can't really develop a secure attachment to a friend or someone outside of my family if I don't have that within my own family. So, um, so this is the whole um, theory of mind thing that I kind of was talking about already is um, I might like um, certain things but we don't have to I have kids that will reject other kids as potential friends because they don't like Minecraft and they don't like Star Wars they'll say well I need someone who likes exactly what I like and it's not going to happen <clears throat> So, um, if we're, as parents, if we're modeling that we have this behavior at home, that's very, we're, we, we are the teacher of our children. 90% of all this stuff really shows what I'm doing. Um, is there an example of something that I've done where I've helped, uh, we try to do um, things at our church, they're, collect, they're doing a boot drive. It might not sound like a big deal that we're, trying to come up with canned goods for, there's a thing in front here. My son said, oh, I didn't know they were collecting peanut butter and blah, blah, blah. And I think the schools do a beautiful job here too. They had a drive to bring in food. They tried to fill a school bus last year with certain kinds of food. Um, but it's important to know we have to take care of, of not just our family, but um, all the people in our area, in our city. Can I have, do I have that 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 response? So interestingly, this is I, this is a, a good example. Of what happened this last week is um, they have a lot of excellent books, especially as kids get older. Um, Diary of Anne Frank is one they had to read that I think in sixth grade. But my daughter, it provoked a lot of ideas that this girl is exactly the same age that she is and all these things happened to her and how she dealt with, 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 with that. She read a book about, um, it was a fantasy book about how a girl was in a neo-Nazi skinhead uh, group in um, Poland and she uh, had a head injury and she was transported back in time and she, and she lived as a Jew during the time of, of Hitler and all that um, to know that there's, um, and then there's the other story that's out now, um, I'm trying to think of the girl's name, she wrote the book and uh, she, she, she was in Afghanistan and the Taliban came over, do you guys know what I'm talking about? It's at the theaters now too. Anyway, she wrote a book about girls' rights um, uh, it's just interesting, you know, that they, they could see that there's other uh, kids that are around their age that are having the same same things going on that they are. Um, okay. So the, exactly what I was just saying, you know, there, there's um, kids that have, that have the same issues that they are having. Um, so little things like that, bringing canned foods to a canned good drive and showing that we can do that and um, share our thoughts. Um, also on TV, uh, I will have to say that I'm so over all the shows on Nick Jr. and there's a couple good ones um, that they we've kind of try to hand pick through those for our social skills group. If we're going to show, try to show someone what we're talking about, um, how to share or, or whatever the topic is that we're talking about, boy, it's awfully hard to find a good model show on Nick Jr. or I'm not just picking on them, but um, some of these shows are just, I don't think they show good behavior at all. And we have the TV on at my house. I'm not saying that. I just think that um, like that character Sam from, uh, I'm probably dating myself, what is that show? Uh, uh, I could see her face, I can't think of it. She just was mean all the time, and I thought, oh, what kind of model is this for kids? It's just not nice, you know? Um, anyway, um, so, um, it says kids really are capable of being spontaneously help, very helpful 
and have lots of sympathy. I think the Cub Scouts are a great way to expose kids to that. They do a lot of things. My son's troop is going to rake leaves for someone in our area that is older and they need help with that. Um, these boys, you couldn't, they're so excited to do this. It's amazing. Um, so we have to give them those um, attempts to, to help out. And um, a reward for doing so, I think, is intrinsic. It's inside of you. That's what we try to do anyway, is say, um, the Boy Scouts are doing it because they're going to be able to get a little badge or something for that, but they're not getting money for it. And I think it's good to learn to teach kids that I don't always have to get a sticker or money. I'm doing it because it's expected of me, and um, it makes you feel good when you're doing it. Uh, so reading a facial expression for a lot for us it's pretty simple to do that like I could tell if someone's bored if they're angry if they're sad sometimes I go overboard and I think that people are annoyed with me and they're really not that's just how they look um, but some people um, don't know how to especially a lot of kids with these issues have a hard time um, so if I can't do a lot of these basics we work on a lot of these things at our practice in these groups, but um, we talk about how how we would read read someone else's face to know um, what they're thinking and feeling. So, speaking of, I mean, this isn't fantastic, but there's a there's lots of different apps. We have picture cards of emotions. There's actually, I don't, I'm sure you guys have these things. If this is something that's an issue. For but I'll find it while I'm talking. Oh, wait a minute. Um, I pulled this one up. It's called I Touch, I Learn Feelings. And I have little, little guy, he's four, and he doesn't know what the difference is between sad and happy, so we started there, because those are two different ends of the spectrum. But there's a billion apps, so mom and dad got one, and I want to say it was a dollar, but um, he's learning what they all are. So. The, so the subtle ones are I'm bored, I'm annoyed, um, but sad and happy are good ones. But there's, you know, there's apps, we have cards, we do this a lot during our day. Um, and then we do acting out of a feeling too a lot. Uh, okay, so we here's what I did with my daughter who's very anxious. I, we coach her on a situation that she's maybe concerned about and is giving her lots of anxiety. Um, we have kids that have very specific needs at school. A uh, large part of it, and I feel so terrible, revolves around lunchtime when nobody sits with you. Horrible. It's horrible. I'm at recess and I really don't know how to go about joining this group of kids and I need some tips on learning how to do that. Sometimes it's as easy as standing next to a group of kids because people don't know that you want to play. So unless I'm near you or I say, can I play? They didn't know that you wanted to. We can't read your mind. So sometimes it's as easy as that and the next thing you know, they're it. But um, now they have the benches. Could you tell us how many schools have that in this area? Do you know, Sarah, about the benches? Anybody know about that? School, Your school has a bench? Benches in a lot of schools. Like a lot of schools went out and bought benches as well. So I know every Westlake Elementary School has benches. Okay. My son says he sees kids sitting at it and that they've been taught, yeah, it's great to have a bench, but what do we do about it? But they've been taught to go over if they see somebody and sometimes They'll say, no, I'm just sitting here to t take a rest. I'm here to take a break. But they have had kids say, yeah, I, I wouldn't mind getting in on your game of football. And if they didn't have the bench, they wouldn't have known that. But uh, I just think those are great ideas. Uh, so, like, these are the subtle things that we work with all the time. How do I... How do I get in with this group? How do I even start to get someone to know that I want to play a certain game? Um, so can we talk about the bossy behavior now that that was something that someone had said was a concern is um, see a lot of kids that are 
because of their own interests, they don't want to play the game that you're playing. Um, they want to they want to play the game they want to play. Or my daughter is a rule changer, which is so annoying because she does it all the time and she gets it from dad. Dad does that too. Change the rules so I can win the game. Um, I get mad because I could see I'm not going to win, so I'll flip the board. Um, very, you know, annoying things, but we practice that. And one of the things is what we practice too is we tell people how that makes me feel when you do that. I know that you really want to win, but let's see what happens if you lose and how you feel. Was it really the end of the world? Let's talk through our feelings about this, but it really makes me not want to play games with you when you have to come in and be bossy and change the rules. So we practice that a lot in our groups. Um, but sometimes if we don't tell someone how something makes us feel, then they don't know that we have to change our behavior. So kids that are bossy, it's, there's a perfectly um, gentle way to talk to kids about these things. If they don't know that it's annoying, if they don't know that it um, makes me not want to play games with you, and but I want to play, I want to, I just can't help but I come in, I change the rules. Other kids too have to let them know how that makes them feel. And kids are surprisingly good at saying, why don't we play my game for five minutes and then we'll play your game for five minutes or whatever. But um, there has to be some give and take um, in, uh, in what you're doing. But, um, but a lot of times kids are surprised that nobody's told them how that makes them the other person feel. It, they're like, are you serious? You're annoyed? I'm like, yeah, I'm annoyed. I wanted to play this game. Or here's sometimes what they'll realize, too, is I made a bad choice. Monopoly was my choice. That's a, that's a, you're stuck in the house. It's raining. There's a snowstorm. I mean, it doesn't go on for just 10 minutes. It's un, it's not something that's expected that you're going to want to sit down and play this to the very end. So you have to choo choose what games are available as well. But, um, and then learning how to have, say, can I join the game? And they say no. How do I react to that? So we practice those things through role play in, in our groups as well. Um, we could use our empathy to say also too and say there's an instance when I was younger and, the, and I wanted to, um, to be in a certain group and, the, and then they told me no. Um, so we do a lot of parent instruction about before play dates there's a lot of things you can practice, whether you role play with your child, whether you talk about scenarios that might happen, they may not even come up, but things that you could do to prep for, for the play date. What does it mean to be a good host? Um, do I hold the Xbox controller and have someone keep asking me, when am I going to have a turn? When am I going to have a turn? I'll We'll flip it on them and have them hear how that sounds, how annoying that sounds. They have someone keep saying, when is my turn, when is my turn? And you say, wait a minute, I have to get to eight. And then I'll let, let you have the controller, how that makes other pe people feel. We talk about that a lot. Um, pick out the games, not games with the violence. Um, how do you know when it's time to move on to the next game? What are the things that we need to hear about? from our friend. I'm done with this. This is boring. Can we do something else? That's when you need to stop. Um, how would they know if their guests are having a good time? Are they smiling, laughing? Um, are they bored? And then after the play date is over, we always recommend too, especially for kids that are younger, is keep it short. Short and successful is awesome. Then you can make the amount of kids that you have over more or you can extend the time of the play date. I always say start off short though. Um, then talk about what happened that went well and what could you improve on um, the next time they have a play date. And be specific about your praise. So to saying, man, you did a great job at the play date. Say, I liked how you shared. I liked how when he told you he didn't want to play this game anymore, you were, a you were able to do the other game. 
Um, they want they need to know what they did right. Um, so this is interesting. Studies in a variety of cultures suggest that children are better off when their parents are <laughs> are, are, mo are monitoring their um, what they're doing. And I I do do it, but I'm also trying to be the cool parent that's not on top of what they're doing. But we have vents in our house where I could hear kind of what they're talking about. I'm trying to listen for voices being raised. I'm not directly in what they're doing, but I definitely want to know what's going on. Um, so you don't have to be in the middle of what they're doing, but kind of be on the outskirts and find out what's going on. Uh, and another thing is, is uh, we've had uh, this last fact for me was very interesting. Um, we have aggressive children in our neighborhood. We really do. And uh, bully, I don't know if I'd call them a bully, but they're kind of aggressive and everything's got to go their way. And um, kids that associate with kids that have problems um, are more are more are more likely to get these uh, to 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 also have to, to also have issues with those same types of things. So we try to help to pick friends. We try to you know we love to expand our circle. People don't have to be exactly like us for us to play with them. But I don't like kids that are mean. And sometimes all it takes is someone saying, you're making me feel bad the way that you're talking to me. And sometimes the, the other kids will stop. They're, they're probably having an issue on their end, knowing how to interact. So, um, all right. And then letting kids work things out on their own, it's very tricky. But we're going to kind of be on the outskirts of what they're doing when they have a play date. And... Um, Kind of let them, uh, you know, you don't want things to get out of control. And we, we know when to step in as parents. We definitely don't any screaming, yelling, hitting, those types of things. But if it's um, a chance for, for, for your child to say, um, to try to use these skills that, that, that they practice and role played with you beforehand, um, see if they could do it on their own. So... The bullying thing, I'm sure they've had Connecting for Kids talks here about bullying. We could go on about this all day. That's all that could go on. You know, there's m many things to talk about about bullying, but uh, the effects of bullying are, are um, could be anxiety and be, 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 be being isolated. Kids tend to say they're sick and they don't go to school. Um, and as adults, there's a lot of issues that they could have, but um, bullying is just not acceptable. That's when I would say, that's just not a friend that's for us. It's just not. So what we do for a social skills class is we usually have kids that have a lot of issues. They don't all share a particular issue. Um, there's, there's common uh, things that we usually look for, but we do have a checklist for parents, which I um, could also send to you. I did not bring one, um, but we talk about what kind of issues are they having? Is it sharing? Is it eye contact? Is it not knowing how to talk with somebody? Do they just talk about their own interests? Sometimes it's, it's subtle. Sometimes there's a lot of issues, but um, what we try to do is set a goal um, for each child in the group um, and we talk about what the behavior looks like and why it's important because I don't know anybody that changes their behavior if they don't know why they have to do it. Um, uh, we're going to get more into these materials that I brought but we do a lot of practicing and role playing and then um, we reinforce the behavior and then there's always something that we try to do outside of the group whether it's a home assignment for parents to go and practice something sometimes it's as easy as um, making eye contact when you're buying something at the store saying thank you very much to the person who's the cashier maybe it could be in a situation at a restaurant maybe it's about um, trying to order their own food at the restaurant there's always something that you could do outside of the group to um, practice your behavior if it's not going to be in a structured play group setting. And um, we've done bowling with the groups that we've done. It's so much fun. Um, we've gone out to eat. Um, 
that was a blast. They all got to use their skills, and they really had a great time when they could point out in others, not in a bad way, but they learned how to say amongst themselves, not us as adults saying, I would like you to try that again, try eye contact the next time the other kids would know. This is what we're all working on. So they would tell their peers in the group that they should work on eye contact the next time the server came with pop look at them and say thank you so that's when we know it's starting to carry over to outside the group but um and then some of our kids in our social skills groups this is awesome we have a little guy he's not a little guy anymore he's in high school he made a friend and had play dates with someone in our group and now he's date, dating a friend of the friend that he went over his house to. So it's like snowballed into these great um, skills as he's gotten older. And um, so anyway, um, I want to just get some materials out. And you're free to look at them if you like. Um, one of the things that we have is feelings in a jar. So it's a game for kids. And some of the high school ones, I have to admit, kind of take me back sometimes, but they are things that we need to talk about. Um, it might